here in moments. The ultimate gala spectacle. The Holy something. mother of God on earth and in heaven at the exact same time. You want a piece of me? You got it! No, no, one question. Two we can't handle. This one can't handle. Two. Go ahead. Give me the better of your two. Can you talk a little bit about what First Lady Melania Trump does for the country and there's a unique level of interest in your administration. So by opening the White House visitor, Visitor's Office, what does that mean to you? And the rest of the now country? that's what I call a nice question. That is very nice. Who are you with? Good. I'm going to start watching. I want to find a friendly reporter. You used to say it was Trump. Are you a friendly reporter? Friendly. Watch how friendly he is. I've been, I've been wait, wait. Watch how friendly he is. Go ahead. I've been you see, he said he was going to ask a very simple, easy question. And it's not. It's not. Not a, not a simple question. Not a fair question. Should I let him have a little bit more? What do you think, Peter? Peter, should I have a, let him have a little bit more? Sit down. Sit down. Just, just, because of the, we'll get just because of the attack of fake news and, and attacking our network, I, I just want to ask you, sir. I'm changing it from fake news, though. Doesn't that under very fake news? I know, but aren't you? <laughs> the press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. The level of dishonesty is out of control. Can I just ask you? Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, the travel, Where are you from? Uh, BBC. Good. Okay. Here's another beauty. It's a good line. <laughs> Impartial, free, and fair. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, Mr. President. Just like CNN, right? I mean, I watch CNN. It's so much anger and hatred. Well, the Daily New York Times wrote a big, long front page story yesterday. And it was very much discredited, as you know. It was, it's a joke. People, I mean, you have a lower approval rate than Congress. I think that's right. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you, you know, you're dishonest people. An unprecedented rift opened up today between America's next commander in chief and U.S. intelligence agencies. Donald Trump likened them to Nazis in an early morning tweet and later at his first post-election news conference. Mr. Trump accuses them of leaking potentially damaging, unproven, and he says false, allegations about him. It all started back during the campaign when a former British intelligence officer acting as a private investigator asked his Russian sources for dirt on Mr. Trump. He collected 35 pages of it, including tales of financial and sexual misbehavior, but no evidence that any of it was true. U.S. intelligence then condensed the privatized notes and gave them to the president, the president-elect, and the leaders of Congress. Major Garrett begins our coverage. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. And it was gotten by opponents of ours. It was a group of opponents that got together, sick people, and they put that crap together. With that, President-elect Donald Trump emphatically denied the unsubstantiated allegations, including one about his sexual behavior. Does anyone really believe that story? I'm also very much of a germaphobe, by the way. <laughs> believe me. That raw information was included as an appendix to a classified report detailing Russian efforts to tamper with the U.S. election, undermine Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton, and help Mr. Trump. Today, for the first time, the president-elect agreed with that assessment, that Russia was responsible for several election-related cyber attacks. As far as hacking, I think it was Russia, but I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. 
But Mr. Trump also cited information revealed by the cyber intrusions. And hacking's bad, and it shouldn't be done. But look at the things that were hacked. Look at what was learned from that hacking. That Hillary Clinton got the questions to the debate and didn't report it? That's a horrible thing. This morning, in response to publication of the unverified information, Mr. Trump tweeted, Intelligence agencies should never have allowed this fake news to leak into the public. Are we living in Nazi Germany? What were you driving at there? I think it was uh, disgraceful, disgraceful, that the intelligence agencies allowed any information that turned out to be so false and fake out. And that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. The president-elect also lashed out at a reporter from CNN, the first news organization to report that the Russian hacking assessment included the unverified claims. Your organization You are terrible. attacking our news organization. Your organization Can you give us a chance to ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state... Can Quiet. You, Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically... She's asking a question. Mr. President -elect. Mr. Trump declined to say whether he would keep sanctions imposed on Russia by President Obama. He also said he would work with Russian President Vladimir Putin. If Putin likes Donald Trump, I consider that an asset, not a liability, because we have a horrible relationship with Russia. Relevant U.S. intelligence agencies had no comment on this dispute with Mr. Trump or its implications. Scott, U.S. investigators are trying to verify what, if any, aspects of the allegations related to Mr. Trump's conduct can be verified. Major Garrett at Trump Tower, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I'm here today to update the American people on the incredible progress that has been made in the last four weeks since my inauguration. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. I turn on the TV, open the newspapers, and I see stories of chaos. Chaos. Yet it is the exact opposite. This administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. President Putin called me up very nicely to congratulate me on the win of the election. He then called me up extremely nicely to congratulate me on the inauguration, which was terrific. And the leaks are absolutely real. The, the news is fake because so much of the news is fake. But I'm having a good time. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you, you know, you're dishonest people. But, but, I'm not ranting and raving. I love this. I'm having a good time doing it. But tomorrow the headlines are going to be, Donald Trump rants and raves. I'm not ranting and raving. We had Hillary Clinton give Russia 20% of the uranium in our country. You know what uranium is, right? It's a thing called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Politically, it would be unpopular for a politician to make a deal. I can't believe I'm saying I'm a politician, but I guess that's what I am now. There's been a report out that 48 uh, uh, bomb threats have been made against Jewish centers all across the country in the last couple of weeks. There are people who are committing anti-Semitic acts or threatening to... You see, he said he was going to ask a very simple, easy question. And it's not. It's an important It's not. Not a, not a simple question. Not a fair question. Okay, sit down. I, I understand the rest of your question. So here's the story, folks. Uh, number one, I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. We lived in a divided nation. And I am going to try. I will do everything within my power to fix that. I want to thank everybody very much. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you have no connection to Russia. Why don't you have your friends and prove it? A taste there. Now, one thing he did uh, in that press conference, a little strange in itself, was hark back to his election victory incorrectly saying his Electoral College win had been bigger than his four predecessors as president. This is what he said. People came out and voted like they've never seen before. So that's the way it goes. I guess it was the biggest Electoral College win since Ronald Reagan. And then this was how he responded when challenged on that. In fact, President Obama got 365 and two. Well, I'm talking about Republican. The yeah. pres President uh, Obama, 332, yeah. and George H.W. Bush, 426. 
when he won as president. So why should Americans trust? Well, no, I was told I was given that information. I don't know. I was just given. We had a very, very big margin. I guess my question is, why should Americans trust you when you accuse the information they receive of being fake when you're providing information? That's well, I don't know. I was given that information. Mr. I was Mr. I've, Mr. Actually, Mr. I've seen that information around. President Trump. It was a strangely ill-disciplined uh, press conference with numerous exchanges of insults with journalists and, of course, the characteristic references to ratings. I see, I see tone. You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. I'm really not a bad person, by the way. No, but the tone is such... I do get good ratings, you have to admit that. The tone is such hatred. Mick Mulvaney, a former congressman, has just been approved weeks late. I have to say that weeks, weeks late. So I want to thank Paul Singer for being here and for coming up to the office. He was a very strong opponent and now he's a very strong ally, including airplane contracts that were out of control and late and terrible. Just absolutely uh, uh, catastrophic in terms of what was happening. And we've done some really good work. We're very proud of that on the incredible progress that has been made in the last four weeks since my inauguration. We have made incredible progress, and uh, there has been a, a tremendous surge of optimism. Plants and factories are already starting to move back into the United States and big league Ford. Unfortunately, much of the media in Washington, D.C., along with New York, Los Angeles, in particular, speaks not for the people, because I'm here again to take my message straight to the people. As you know, our administration inherited many problems across government and across the economy. On foreign affairs, we've already begun enormously productive talks with many foreign leaders, much of it you've covered, with Canada to promote women's business leaders and entrepreneurs. Very important to me, very important to my daughter Ivanka. I've ordered plans to begin for the massive rebuilding of the United States military. Our country will never have had a military like the military. We have the greatest people on earth in our military, but they don't have the right equipment and their equipment is old. We have begun the monumental task of returning the government back to the people on a scale not seen in many, many years. They lied to the American people in order to get elected. Some of the things I'm doing probably aren't popular, but they're necessary for security and for other reasons because people came out and voted like they've never seen before. So that's the way it goes. I guess it was the biggest electoral college win since Ronald Reagan. So we have a wonderful group of people that's working very hard, uh, that's being uh, very much misrepresented about, and we can't let that happen. Again, each of these actions is a promise I made to the American people. So we'll go over just some of them, and we have a lot happening next week and in the weeks, in the weeks coming. And I want regulations because I want safety, I want environmental, uh, all environmental situations to be taken properly care of. It's very important to me. We've ordered the Department of Homeland Security and Justice to coordinate on a plan to destroy criminal cartels coming into the United States with drugs. We've ordered a crackdown on sanctuary cities that refuse to comply with federal law and that harbor criminal aliens. And we've ordered an end to the policy of catch and release on the border. No more release. No matter who you are, release. Though parts of our necessary and constitutional actions were blocked by a judge's, in my opinion, incorrect and unsafe ruling, Extreme vetting will be put in place, and it already is in place in many places. In fact, we had to go quicker than we thought because of the bad decision we received from a and put new Buy American measures in place to require American steel for American pipelines. So we've begun preparing to repeal and replace Obamacare, and our deep among their responsibilities will be ending the bleeding of jobs from our country and negotiating fair trade deals for our citizens. Jobs have already started to surge. Since my election, Ford announced it will abandon its plans to build a new factory in Mexico and will instead invest $700 million in Michigan. And one more thing, I have kept my promise to the American people by nominating a justice of the United States Supreme Court, Judge Neil Gorsuch. 
Uh, in fact, I saw a couple of the people that were supposedly involved with all of this, but they know nothing about it. They weren't in Russia. They never made a phone call to Russia. They never received a phone call. The first thing I thought of when I heard about it is, how does the press get this information that's classified? How do they do it? You know why? Because it's an illegal process. And that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be, and he, he didn't just call Russia. He called and, and spoke to both ways. Uh, I think there were 30 some odd countries. He's doing the job. You know, he was just doing his job. And the other person, people knew that he represented various countries, but I don't think he represented Russia. Russia is fake news. Russia, this is fake news put out by the media. The real news is the fact that people, probably from the Obama administration, because they're there, because we have our new people going in place right now, as you know. That was like the story they wrote about the women and me. Front page, big, massive story. And it was nasty. And then they called, they said, we never said that. We like Mr. Trump. They called up my office. We like Mr. Trump. We never said that at all because of the fact that, you know, I think that we're going to be able to straighten it out very easily on its own. Uh, as far as uh, the general is concerned, when I first heard about it, anything is wrong. I don't, really didn't think it was really what happened after that. But he didn't think anything was done wrong. I didn't either because I waited a period of time and I started to think about it. I said, well, I don't see. And I thought that was not acceptable as far as as far as uh, the actual uh, making the call. In fact, I've watched uh, various programs and I've read various articles. I think you'll see it stopping because now we have our people in. You know, again, we don't have our people in because we can't get them approved by the Senate. We just had Jeff Sessions approved in justice, as an example. I said, that's terrible that it was leaked, but it wasn't that important. But then I said to myself, what happens when I'm dealing with the problem of North Korea? What happens when I'm dealing with the problems in the Middle East? We were dealing on this case with Mike Flynn. All this information gets put into the Washington Post and gets put into the New York Times. Really, really important subjects like North Korea. We got to stop it. That's why it's a criminal penalty. CNN, it's so much anger and hatred and just the hatred. I don't watch it anymore because it's very good. He's saying no. I think we're setting a record or close to a record in the time of approval of a cabinet. I mean, the numbers are crazy. When I'm looking, some of them had approved immediately. I'm going forever. And I still have a lot of they're giving stuff what was said in an office about uh, Hillary cheating on the debates, which, by the way, nobody mentions. Nobody mentions that Hillary received the questions to the debates. So it certainly would have been okay with me if he did it. I would have directed him to do it if I thought he wasn't doing it. I didn't direct him, but I would have directed him because that's his job. And it came out that way. And in all fairness, I watched, but they were hacked and terrible things came in. And, you know, the only thing that I do think is unfair is some of the things were so, they were when I heard some of those things, I, I picked up the papers the next morning. I said, oh, this is going to be front page. It wasn't even in the papers. And I just think you'd be a lot better off. I honestly do. The public gets it, you know. Look, when I go to rallies, they turn around, they start screaming at CNN. They want to throw their placards at CNN, you know. See, I know when I should get good and when I should get bad. And sometimes I'll say, wow, that's going to be a great story. And I'll get killed. I know what's good and bad. I'd be a pretty good reporter, not as good as you. They'll even make it negative. So I understand it. So... Because I'm there. I know what was said. I know who's saying it. Now, maybe I had something to do with that. I don't know. But they don't believe you. If you were straight and, and really told it like it is, as Howard Cosell used to say, right? And Reince happens to be doing a good job. But half of his job is putting out lies. He'd rather be working on tax reform, Jim. I mean that. I would be your biggest fan in the world if you treated me right now. I sort of understand there's a certain bias, maybe by Jeff or somebody, you know, for whatever, you know, whatever reason. And that's why the public sees it. They see it. They see it's not fair. You take a look at some of your shows and you see the bias and the hatred. Hillary Clinton did a reset. Remember with the stupid plastic button that made us all look like a bunch of jerks? Here, take a look. He looked at her like the tax would be easier, in my opinion, but for statutory reasons and for budgetary reasons, we have to submit the health care sooner. So we'll be submitting health care sometime in early March, mid-March. And after that, we're going to come up and we're doing very well on tax reform. Because probably Putin assumes that he's not going to be able to make a deal with me because it's politically not popular for me to make a deal. So Hillary Clinton tries a reset. It failed. They all tried. 
but I'm different than those people. Go ahead. Uh, he's going to be fantastic. Uh, yes, uh, I think that I've is already... Is Putin testing you, do you believe, sir? And to be honest, secondarily, I want to do the right thing for the world. If Russia and the United States actually got together and got along, and don't forget, we're a very powerful nuclear country, and so are they. There's no upside. Nuclear holocaust would be like no other. They're a very powerful nuclear country, and so are we. If we have a good relationship with Russia, believe me, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. So when you say they're not good... Does anybody really think that Hillary Clinton would be tougher on Russia than Donald Trump? Does anybody in this room really believe that? Okay. But i tell you one thing. She tried to make a deal. She had the reset. Hillary Clinton gave away 20% of the uranium in the United States. She's close to Russia. Can we, can I gave, you know what I gave to Russia? You know what I gave? Nothing. We are going to attack Mosul in four months. Then three months later. We are going to attack Mosul in one month. Next week, we are going to attack Mosul. In the meantime, Mosul is very, very difficult. You know why? Because I don't talk about military, and eventually you guys are going to get tired of asking that question. So when you ask me, what am I going to do with the ship? The Russian ship, as an example, I'm not going to tell you. But hopefully I won't have to do anything, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Thanks. And he was right. As soon as he said it, I said, wow, never thought of it. I said, how about one week? He said, no good. You got to do it immediately, because if you do it immediately, they don't have time to come in. Now, nobody ever reports that. I'm sure you probably get it because it was classified, so I'm sure everybody in this room perhaps has it. But... We had a very, very good talk. I have nothing to do with Russia. To the best of my knowledge, no person that I deal with does. Now, Manafort has totally denied it. He denied it. Now, people knew that he was a consultant over in that part of the world for a while, but not for Russia. But Paul Manafort, who's a good man also, by the way, Paul Manafort was replaced long before the election took place. He was only there for a short period of time. I hate the charge. I find it repulsive. I hate even the question because people that know me, and you heard the Prime Minister, you heard uh, they were brought here in such a way. It's a, very, it's a very, very tough subject. We are going to deal with DACA with heart. I have to deal with a lot of politicians, don't forget. And I have to convince them that what I'm saying is, and the things they say, and I've known her for a long time, the things they say are so unfair. And actually, she's been apologized to, as you know, by various media, because they said things that were lies. I just, uh, we are going to be uh, working very hard on the industries having to do with education, having to do with crime. They're living in hell. We can't let that happen. So we're going to be very, very strong. It's a great question, and, and, and a, it's, a very, it's a very difficult situation, because it's been many, many years. It's been festering for many, many years. But we have places in this country that we have to fix. We have to help Oh, I'm working on it. No, I'm working on it very hard. No, no, look. Hey, just so you understand, we had a totally divided country for eight years and long before that, in all fairness to President Obama. I want to thank everybody very much. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump has one more cabinet member confirmed with Congress going away for a week now. At the Capitol, here's Fox's Jared Halpern. And before setting off on that week and a half long recess, the Senate confirmed Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt to lead the Environmental Protection Agency, a vote Democrats argued should have waited until emails ordered to be released by a state judge this week could be viewed. If there's nothing in those emails that are concerning, then we know the vote count won't change two Mondays from now. Hawaii Democrat Brian Schatz, but Republican leader Mitch McConnell responded, if it wasn't emails, it would have been something else to delay. They want to give their left-wing agitators enough time to get up and get organized. A vote for the Commerce Secretary nominee, Investor Wilbur Ross, is now set in the Senate for the end of the month. Chris. Sure, thanks. President Trump is back in Florida for the weekend after a stop in South Carolina to tour a Boeing plant and see the new Dreamliner 787. Our country is all about making dreams come true. Over the last number of years, that hasn't been necessarily the case, but we're going to make it the case again. The president's holding a campaign-style rally tomorrow at the Orlando-Melbourne International Airport. On Wall Street, the six-day streak of record highs for the Dow is snapped, with the blue chips falling 
Well, actually, no, they're up a point at this point. The final number is not in. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ both posting gains today. The White House denies considering National Guard troops to help round up immigrants in the country illegally. The AP has a memo suggesting the Guard be used in 11 states to enforce immigration law. It is not a White House document. That's White House spokesman Sean Spicer. There's been shots fired near the zoo in Oakland, California. We're told that gunman has been disarmed and is in police custody. There are unconfirmed reports that the shooter was shot by Oakland police. A car bomb attack covering, targeting government lodgings in southeastern Turkey has killed a three-year-old child. You're listening to Fox News Radio, fair and balanced. Vice President Pence is in Germany. He has a speech tomorrow at the Munich Security Conference and meetings with German Chancellor Angela Merkel and other world leaders. Flags were at half-staff at the Capitol to honor a longtime congressman from Illinois who died. Bob Michael, born in Peoria, Illinois, had a congressional career that stretched for 38 years, first elected in 1957. He served as House Minority Leader for 14 years in the Reagan and George H.W. Bush administrations and was known for reaching across the aisle to get things done. Here addressing Democratic Speaker Tom Foley in 1994. We have uh, usually found ourselves on different sides of the issues, but we have forged a friendship for one another based on our mutual respect and love for this institution. Michael didn't seek re-election that year when Republicans won control of the House for the first time in 40 years. Michael, 93, would have had his 94th birthday in less than two weeks. Pat O'Neill, Fox News. The dress code for a prom and how it's being enforced has some kids and parents opposed and school officials standing their ground. Students and their dates will have to get their outfits pre-approved by officials at Archbishop Ryan High School in the Philadelphia area before they can buy a ticket to the prom. Parents are concerned that their daughters are required to send a full-body photo in their gown to an email address monitored by some administration officials. What happens to it after the fact? Who has, who has access to this? Hundreds of students have signed a petition objecting to the dress code, calling it degrading, arbitrary, and unfair. The school is standing by its policy. Anna Wells, Fox News. The Cincinnati Zoo brought in a chiropractor for the first time to successfully treat a Malaysian tiger cub having trouble holding its head up with its neck and spine out of place. Those cubs are two weeks old. There's three of them under constant care with feeding six times a day because their mother's maternal instincts never really kicked in. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News Radio. Conditioning, wax on wax off, prepare for the listening. Integration is what I deliver. If the shoe fits, oh well, go figure. Tired of this ignorant whack MCs hijacking them and make them say please. Make them back to re enter the world of hip hop. Mic check one, two, you don't stop. Basic training is the situation. As I blaze across the nation, time to let these rhymes redefine. Blow your mind as we pass the time. Uh, uh. What happens to this thing called hip hop? We're going to bring you to your non stop. All about the fame, no fun. Each one teach one, we must get it done. What happens to this thing called hip hop? We're going to bring you to your non stop. All about the fame, no fun. Each one teach one, we must get it done. What happens to this thing called hip hop? 
We're going to bring it to you non-stop All about the bang, no fun Each one, teach one, we must get it done What happened to this thing called hip-hop? We're going to bring it to you non-stop All about the bang, no fun Each one, teach one, we must get it done